Good morning. I'll call to order this regular meeting of the Zoning and Planning Committee. Today is October 13th, 2016. I'm Lisa Bender. I chair the committee. We have a quorum today with Council Members Reich, Goodman, and Andrew Johnson. Uh, and Council Members Warsami and Council President are absent. We have eight items on today's agenda. All but one are part of the consent agenda, so we'll begin with that. That's not correct. That's not correct. There are three items under public hearing. So we'll start with item four uh, on the consent agenda. So item number four is a rezoning at 3454 33rd Avenue South um, to allow for a legally non-conforming duplex as well as an accessory dwelling unit. Item number five is a rezoning at 2444 Logan Avenue North um, to reestablish rights for an existing four unit building. Item number six is a right of way vacation uh, shown as 32nd Avenue. Item number seven is passage of an ordinance amending our code of ordinances related to snow storage. And item number eight is referring to staff and ordinance for our zoning code updating our regulations around split zoning of parcels for the same development. Does anyone want to pull any of those or any discussion? Okay, I will move items four through eight. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those items carry. So then we will return to the three items on our public hearing agenda, starting with item number one, a conditional use permit variances and site plan review for 1501 Como Avenue Southeast, starting with a staff presentation, and then we will open the public hearing for anyone who would like to speak. And if you would like to speak on any of the items under the public hearing, uh, it would be helpful to sign in with our clerk either before or after you speak. Thank you. Good, Good morning. morning, Chair Bender, committee members. My name is Janelle Woodmire. I'm a senior city planner. On the project that you have before you is located at 1501 Como Avenue Southeast. Uh, the proposal is for a new three-story multifamily residential building. And to familiarize it with a little with you it with you a little bit, uh, the site would have um, the building up to the street on Como and 15th Avenue. There would be some ground floor units fronting Como. The main lobby entrance would be at the corner of those two streets. And then they'd have enclosed parking on the first level with access from um, 15th Avenue. Uh, there would also then be two levels of housing above. So the decision before you today is an appeal of the decision of the Planning Commission on all the applications that were required for this project. Uh, so I'll go through those. The first would be a conditional use permit to increase the maximum height of the building. Uh, in the C1 district uh, where the site is located, the maximum building height is two and a half stories or 35 feet. The height of the building would comply with the 35 feet but needs um, the additional increase for the st uh, third story. And they're also asking for a variance to reduce the minimum front yard requirement. That would be adjacent to 15th Avenue because there's um, residentially zoned property to the north. And that setback requirement is 15 feet. So on the screen there, you can see in the upper left corner, um, that red box, that's where that front yard is located. So the first floor would partially extend in there and then the upper two levels um, extend above that cantilever over that and are at zero feet from the front lot line. Then they're also requesting a variance to um, reduce the minimum, minimum interior side yard requirement along the north property line. That would be to go from nine feet to six feet to allow the building. Uh, then another yard variance is requested this time on the east side um, where we have a rear yard requirement for a transformer that's in the lower right corner. And the uh, setback requirement there is five feet with the pad and um, they'd be asking to go down to zero feet. And the, there's one other variance requested that's for the minimum parking requirement. Uh, the minimum requirement is 15 spaces and they're asking to go down to 12. And finally, they need site plan review. So again, the zoning here is C1. Uh, this site is also located, um, just to give you some more context on this, um, this site is located in a commercial node. Um, Como Avenue is also a community corridor. So, um, all of these applications were um, appealed, and there's a statement of appeal included in your packets. But the Planning Commission did approve the applications on consent, so I'll just go through the findings that were made by staff um, briefly, starting with the um, conditions permit for height. So 
So again, it's just an increase to allow the third story because only two and a half stories are um, allowed. The top of the parapet, the tallest part is at 35 feet. So they're within that height limitation. Um, looking at separation from surrounding properties, it, um, it was determined that they'd have a minimal impact on surrounding properties. Uh, that property to the north, um, which would most likely be impacted by shadowing, is separated from the subject site by a driveway on their property. So certainly. So um, in that lower, Madam Chair. Could you go back to the slide of what's surrounding it and leave that up? I can't look at it fast enough to. Thank you. Just leave that there while you're doing your presentation. Okay. Actually, what might be, well, I'll go through these pictures. Um, so it might be easier to start with this upper left corner. That is the subject site. Um, so that existing building would be removed. Uh, you can see in the back there, it might help to zoom in. There you can see the residential property to the north. And across Como Avenue, that's Van Cleve Park. Um, and then so that to your east, that's where we have more of those commercial uses so in that lower picture. You can see some of those. Um, that would be on the south side of Como. Again, in the uh, upper left corner and then lower bottom picture, that's more pictures of those surrounding commercial uses in the commercial node. And then in the upper right corner, that's looking down Como Avenue to the east as the, the uses transition to residential. So we have more of those multifamily uh, residential structures. Uh, so then um, looking again at impacts to surrounding uses, um, that north property that I mentioned, they are, that building is separated from the subject property by a driveway. So the distance between the proposed building and the building to the north would be a total of 29 feet. Uh, one other thing that we looked, oh, and let me not forget, um, the building to the east as well ha does have residential in it on the upper floor. And again, it's separated from the subject property by a driveway. Uh, we did find that uh, higher density is appropriate for this site. Uh, again, I mentioned the, that it's located in a commercial node and a community corridor. Um, and then just looking at the, the character of the surrounding uses, the additional height increase would fit in with that, with these surrounding uses. Uh, so moving on to the front yard variance. Again, I noted out that it's just that upper uh, northwest corner that is subject to that front yard requirement. The, um, and again, with that separation of that property to the north, there's less of an impact um, by reducing the front yard requirement. Uh, if you note, the first floor is set back six feet to allow some separation between the garage door and the sidewalk along 15th, and that's to ensure that there's fewer uh, conflicts with pedestrians. Uh, the Council Member Rake has a question. Oh. Just to touch on that point, so the, pre the preponderance of the linear footage would be compliant. It's just there's a certain section that would not be compliant, and you have that outlined in red. Is that That's correct? correct. Just okay. the area in red is what is subject to the yard variance. So south of that, um, south of this line here, that's outside of the front yard. Uh, so, oh, and then, uh, so that's the first floor. And on the first floor, we did um, include a condition that they not move that first floor wall forward anymore because of that preventing um, conflicts with pedestrians reason. Uh, so that's a condition of approval. So then it would just be the second and third floors that would be allowed to extend up to the property line in that corner. Uh, and again, we looked at um, the density here would be appropriate, and this allows additional units to be constructed by allowing the reduction in the front yard requirement. Uh, and we also consider the fact that this is a, a kind of a small site, um, and it's difficult to fit the higher density as well as the parking that's required here. So if you were to 
um, not approve the, the front yard variance. Um, it would eliminate a parking space um, because they do need the drive aisle behind that accessible uh, space there. And if they were trying to accommodate it, then it could mean um, removing additional active spaces on the ground floor, which is also something that we call for uh, in this location. So given those, given those considerations, um, we did support the front yard variance. So moving on to the side yard variance, um, that again is to go from nine feet to six feet on the north side of the property. And uh, the reason that the applicant did that was to allow more amenities on the south side of the building. So the, that south side of the building would be set back three feet from that lot line at East Como. And what they're proposing to do is a three foot buffer there plus a six feet sidewalk. The six foot um, sidewalk was required by public works to have a completely clear zone. And then adjacent to the curb line, they'd have street trees where there currently are none. Uh, so that was the trade off that was proposed doing more amenities on Como um, to have a reduced setback on the north side. And again, looking at that separation of the property to the north, um, we, this variance was also supported. And moving on to the rear yard variance, and that would be for the transformer uh, that would be uh, adjacent to Como Avenue. And this is a yard requirement here because there is that adjacent residential use on the second floor. So that does trigger a yard requirement. Uh, this site um, has two street frontages and it doesn't have an alley. So there's some limited options for where a transformer could be located. Uh, and there's also some maintenance accessibility requirements that were considered. But um, we also recognize that having it adjacent to Como is a very visible location. And so we did uh, recommend, and these conditions were adopted, uh, that were intended to lessen the visibility of the transformer. So the first one would be that the transformer be decoratively wrapped. Uh, secondly, we uh, had a condition that additional plantings, screen plantings be provided. You can see there's a, a row of um, perennials in front of the transformer, so we want that to be increased. And then lastly, um, included a condition that they work with Excel to explore moving the transformer further from uh, Como Avenue. So perhaps it could be moved behind the bike rack so where they still have access for maintenance, but again, moving it further away is gonna reduce its visibility. Uh, so after that, uh, they also have that parking variance to go from 15 spaces to 12 spaces. And that ends up being a, uh, uh, ratio of 0.4 spaces per bedroom. And um, again, we found that the higher density was appropriate here. They've also um, don't have additional room to provide parking um, to get the active spaces on, on Como Avenue. Um, they can't provide more parking. And Ms. Wedmeyer, this is in the university district overlay? It is. Which essentially has higher parking requirements than the citywide transit-oriented parking policy. So if this was not in the district overlay, but was in any other part of the city, I believe it wouldn't require a variance. Is that correct? Uh, it would still require a variance because they're doing 30 units in 30 bedrooms. Um, so they're subject to... It's less than 50 units. So as long as they would be near transit, they wouldn't have any parking oh, requirement. Oh, thank you. Yes, I forgot about that provision. That's correct. Okay. Yes, they would not have a parking requirement. So the variance is because it's in the university district overlay, which has this higher requirement for smaller buildings. That's correct. Okay, yes. thanks. Uh, yes, and so um, this being in the University Area Overlay District, they are in close proximity to the U of M, um, but they also have access to alternative modes of transportation um, right across Como as the transit stop with uh, frequent service. Uh, there's also bike lanes on Como, and then the applicant is proposing to do nine additional bike spaces and um, that exceeds the minimum bicycle parking requirement. So, to emphasize the importance of those additional bike spaces, we did include that as a condition of approval so they can't remove those at a later date. Uh, so that concludes the findings for the variances I'll just mention with the site plan review. They were meeting all the standards except for one, and that would be for the active functions. Um, even though they're providing a lot of active functions on Como Avenue, at actually at 85%, um, they fall below the 70% um, minimum at, along 15th Avenue there at 41%. And that's to accommodate their trash and their parking entrance. Um, so again, going back to that um, issue, if you add more active spaces, then you're gonna eliminate parking and they're already asking for a parking variance. Um, but they have proposed an additional alternative by 
providing a patio out front along 15th uh, Avenue um, to engage the street more there. Uh, so alternative compliance was recommended for that, that standard. Um, there's one other uh, uh, factor addressed in the site plan review, and that would be um, the lack of a commercial tenant space on the ground floor. Uh, this is that's something that's strongly encouraged in a commercial mode. It's also something strongly encouraged by the small area plan. Uh, with the C1 zoning, it's not, of course, mandated that they do commercial on the site. Um, so we just strongly encourage that they consider doing commercial here. Um, because mixed use would be appropriate here. Uh, so one other thing um, that you may want to um, be aware of is that uh, this site in particular is not in the middle of any public view corridors that are identified by the comprehensive plan or the small area plan. Um, so that was not an issue that was raised in the staff report. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I can take any questions. Thank you. This was not um, discussed at Planning Commission. Do we know why? It's a little bit unusual to have an appeal of a project that was approved on consent at Planning Commission. Did something happen that folks weren't able to make the meeting, or do we know? Uh, after the consent agenda was approved, um, the appellant did show up at the meeting and so had missed their opportunity to speak. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? Okay. So we will go ahead and open the public hearing. Why don't we start with the applicant? the project team, and then we'll have the folks who've appealed the project speak, and then anyone else who would like to speak can come up after that. Good morning, committee members. I'm Carol Lansing, Fagri Baker Daniels, 90 South 7th Street. I'm representing CPM companies. Um, also here is Daniel Oberpriller and architect Scott Nelson. Um, I handed out a letter to you that um, made what we believe are the key points about each of the applications, and Janelle um, stated most of those in her presentation to you, or all of those, I think, in her presentation to you. So there's just a couple quick comments I'd like to add, and then we're here if you have any questions. Um, just to reemphasize, the height of this building meets the 35-foot height limit. Um, and uh, if the video people can zoom in on this a little bit, it would help. Janelle also made the point that this front yard setback only applies in that little portion of the building. And um, glad that she noted that protection of views from other residences is not the intent of the code when you're looking at a height increase or setbacks. But to make the point, this part of the building um, complies with the front setback being built at the property line. And there really you know, are no views that um, compliance with the setback here would preserve. Um, the side and rear yard setbacks are um, a much improved condition for these neighbors. It's currently paved and building up to the property line here. It will be landscaped yards. They're a little less. The building will comply on this side. It's just the transformer that needs the variance. And there's quite a bit of separation uh, between the proposed new buildings and the existing ones because of where their driveways are located. Um, in the packet that went to the Planning Commission, there is a letter from the person who is the chair of the steering committee for the recently adopted Como Blueprint. And I'd just like to note, she says she's writing to support the development. It's the first development since the neighborhood plan was adopted, and it very much complies with the Blueprint's recommendations for buildings along Southeast Como. Um, so we think it's a great project um, for this site, and we're here for questions. Are there any questions? There are none. Thank you. All right. Let's then have the appellant please come up and let us know why you've appealed this project. Good, good morning. Um, my name's Nick Puzak. I live at 4235 East Lake Harriet, and I own the building to the north. And was born and raised southeast and is familiar with the park, et cetera. And my comments today um, will, first of all, acknowledge I'm probably the luckiest guy in town. I mean, I got to buy southeast real estate 35 years ago. And I'm appreciative of that fact. But even more so today of the audience that I have, and I apologize 
that I was a few minutes late for the zoning, for the Planning Commission public hearing, which was then closed and moved this item to the consent agenda, whereas today then we have my opportunity to speak, and I want, I want to express my appreciation for that. Thank you. Um, I like to preface my remarks by saying that, first of all, having spent decades in the real estate business, I am, I'd like to cloak these comments in terms of that I am, in fact, pro-development. I have been pro-development in the city of Minneapolis and have been bullish on the city of Minneapolis for 35 years. However, not all ideas are good ideas. And I think it's time with this specific site for the city to drive a little bit harder bargain and not just take the first project that comes down the road. Um, I take no pleasure in appear appearing up here today. It's really a consequence of my background in neighborhood work and that it's my understanding that through the Southeast Como Improvement Association, this project was vetted without using Robert's Rules of Orders and was never put to a vote. So it has never been sanctioned by a vote in favor of this project at Sikia. The This project actually would be great in the 1600 block on the south side of the street in the second ward. But for this site on the park with its southwest orientation over, over Van Cleve and the park improvements at the park in that northeast corner of the park, it clearly uh, introduces the concept of highest and best use. And this proposal does not represent the highest and best use for this land. This is, a, this is and has been, in the small area plan, a, a public service, excuse me, a commercial node that over my decades of, you know, playing around there, shopping there has never been full. Recently, just in the last couple of years, it's finally 100% occupied. Finally. There's now a nice gourmet burger place. There's a sushi bar. There's a protein shake. Actually, a second, second health food shop. They've opened up a second shop there. Investment in the coffee shop on the corner. And this is the only retail site that can take further retail development. There's plenty of sites around. As a matter of fact, the developer, they, the partners own a site two blocks down that they could easily build on. They've owned it for years, but they're trying to ram too many units under parked on this site and take, and basically obliterate all that's done by the Minneapolis Park Board to develop this park for the community. The retail service node, my vision sees much more of like a brew pub or an outdoor cafe or an ice cream store, leveraging the brand new zero depth swimming pool which is just down the road, maybe 50 yards. Brand new, just opened this year. This is a plaque which represents the public art on the corner that through these organizations of collaboration represented the focal point or the center point of the neighborhood through the NRP back in 1998. I was unable, I'm sorry, to get the actual amount of resources that were put into this corner, but this represents one of the investments in the corner that this project just completely obliterates. It walls off all the neighbors on 15th Avenue to the first ward from this piece Excuse me, sir. Councilmember Goodman. Okay. Mr. Puzak. Yes. You need to stick to the issues under appeal. Thank you. I, I'm just trying to help you. Help me help you. I need to hear why 
a variance, a conditional use permit, or a site plan review is inconsistent with the city's zoning code. So like all of these other soft, touchy-feely things are interesting. I like hearing about it, but it won't help you make your case. And I don't want you to use your valuable time doing anything other than attempting to dispute why a conditional use permit, a variant or site, a variance or site plan review cannot be approved based on the city's zoning code in this location. Views of the park, you're not gonna get any sympathy for anyone up here. Thank you. I appreciate that. The first, the first aberration involves staff factual error in listing this on the planning commission agenda as win war two. Now back when I was paying attention to these types of things, there was about 28,000 voters here that were thrown off by this agenda, by this oversight. Why is it listed in Ward 2? And why are the surrounding properties all listed as three-story when none of them, in fact, are three-story? The comments by staff today that the setback at 29 feet without the is, is only accurate if the variances are not granted. That is inaccurate. I measured that from the, from the front of my building that is north of the subject property, and that is just not accurate. It's actually saddening to me that the incomplete nature of the staff report, how it can be riddled with, fact, with factual error. The jog as an asymmetrical here has not been, has not been considered in terms of the Como neighborhood is served by and this corner is subject to the 35W exit where the traffic flows through here. So to say, and again, in the staff report, that this does not increase density on this corner is inaccurate. The Como neighbors circumvent something called the University of Minnesota, six blocks to the south, and fl flow through this corner. Sir, we, <clears throat> your testimony is important to us. I do want to make sure we are able to get to the next two items for public hearings. So I if understand. you could wrap up in the next couple I, of minutes, we I, would I, appreciate it. I, I understand. The hardship cited, the hardship cited, is also inaccurate. As a former licensed appraiser, there's no hardship on this site. Here's a competing site sold at about the same money, operating as retail. At 601 University, thank you if you could zoom that out. This, this really is the only site or service expansion in the neighborhood. Technically, the project meets the under 35 foot, if that's the zoning code, but there's no other opportunity here for jobs expansion or to develop something, like this is the slam dunk for the site. This is not a layup. This is not an uncontested layup. This is a slam dunk. The Longfellow Grill has been a runaway success fronting on parkland if we can agree that parks are used as an economic development tool. Retail, by eliminating retail out of this, out of this parcel, they say it's strongly encouraged. It's not going to happen if it's not mandated. But the Longfellow Grill is complete with public art. It's an absolute carbon copy, which could be done on this site with the appropriate attention to the highest and best use. So I'm going to ask that you finish in the next two, two minutes. So if you have any more um, points related to the conditional use permit or variances, we welcome those. Here's now. Loring Park. 
more learning park. All the demographics in this city, here's Chicago crossings. This park frontage on PV Park serves all demographics here. This supports three restaurants. Even the north side of the bread and pickle at Lake Harriet is now developed to have park frontage, retail cafe type, which this lack of retail in this development ignores. The point about the transit stop is very germane. This is the first stop north of Dinky Town. The double length number three buses, this is the first stop there. It's the terminus of the collaborative lighting project between the neighbors and the University of Minnesota. It can actually be a true destination, a hub, a beehive of activity if retail is mandated in this site. And all I ask you to do today is grant my appeal to further refine retail into this site. Okay, thank you, sir. The, I'm going to make sure that um, there's anyone else who likes to speak that they would have an opportunity. If the parks are a tool of economic development, Madam Chair, if the parks are a tool of economic development, Please, if you consider that at all, please grant my appeal. Thank you. I think we've heard uh, your points. Is, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you very much for coming. I do uh, apologize for the uh, issue at the Planning Commission, and we're glad that you were able to make no, it. Today. I perfectly understand that, and that was my fault. Okay. The last thing I want, the last thing I want to Sir, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Is the stop work order for illegal construction conducted by CPM across the park, three blocks away, that I really don't think that granting multiple variances is the appropriate type of public policy for a developer who conducts themselves in our community like this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming again, and I will close the public hearing. Uh, is there a motion on this item? Council Member Reich? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. A few comments first. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just deal with the appeal and then the nature of the variances in, in their application. Uh, in terms of the appeal, I think uh, there's been a broader conversation that's brought forward that's uh, somewhat compelling, uh, but it would have been more germane much, much earlier in the process. Um, I really much do like to have the exercise of proactively looking at transition zones to see what could be best highest use as a retail moves into residential. Is it a mixed use? Does the residential dominate? Does the, uh, the, the uh, retail dominate? And how can we get from A to B very early in the process before the market forces take over? But once they do take over, they have rights. And they've, uh, they've uh, applied those rights in their application. Uh, in, in so doing, they've, they've sought variances. So in terms of the appeal, though there are many germane uh, notions in and of themselves, very interesting commentary in and of themselves for today's exercise, which is adjudicating the facts before us, it, it's just not the right format, unfortunately. If we're early in the process, with the, particularly with the community group, uh, we could have definitely applied those principles, and I would definitely have been defending them. Uh, but before us now, I, I just have to go with the staff findings that are accurate. Now, the variances, we can say, okay, why did they get so many variances and to what end? Uh, first of all, the variances weren't great stretches, as we noted in the, in the presentation, and they really were in defense of having something to have a stronger presence per the different plans that, that guide their analysis, both the small air plans derived from the community's input themselves and their own plans, of course, which are directed by the policies that we've created ourselves. So with that, I think they didn't, they didn't uh, uh, err in their, their um, uh, analysis. In the spirit of which they did it, I think they were trying to make a better project. Within their rights, they could have dropped down a rather homely, rather cumbersome, non interactive, non-street facing, uh, with the sort of things that we like, that could have been done by right. Instead, they negotiated and massaged something that actually reflects many of our aspirations and our plans uh, by allowing these variances. So the variances were tools to get to things we actually want and avoid the things we actually don't want. And so that's where we got to play with the edges of the market. So I think the appeal uh, just wasn't the right timing for the points made. 
And in terms of the variances applied, I think they were applied uh, in, the, in the service of getting an active street corner activated. So with that, I will move uh, denial. Thank you. Council Member Reich has moved to deny the appeal on all of the items. Is there any further discussion? I will just note, um, maybe echoing what Council Member Reich's comments, that um, the points are very well taken about the desire to have retail, particularly in a spot like this that's near public amenities and transit. Um, for us to make the decision to force that, though, I think would um, end up actually making the cost of housing in the project go up. I think oftentimes in these small projects, the retail is difficult to fill and expensive. And so uh, I think this is a really nice project and a great part of town where we need to see more housing. And uh, so um, again, uh, support, support the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries and includes the adoption of the staff findings. So then we'll move to item number two, which is an interim use permit for the Metro Transit Transportation Network at 4640 Lindell Avenue North. As staff is shifting here, I'll also note that we've had a couple of these issues at Planning Commission lately, and we're working on amending the notification that will go out so everyone knows that process of how to make sure something isn't on consent if there's a desire for public comment about an item at the Planning Commission hearings. Good morning, Chair Bender, committee members. Uh, my name is Peter Crandall. I'm a city planner with CPAD. Uh, before you is an application for an interim use permit on the property located at 4640 Lindale Avenue North. This is in the fourth ward. The site is currently zoned I-2, and you can see is within the Camden Industrial District, adjacent to the Lynn Bohannon neighborhood. Um, bus garage and maintenance facility is allowed as a conditional use in the I-2 district. And normally we would have the applicant seek a permanent conditional use permit and undergo site plan review for an auto-oriented use. The applicant is seeking an interim use permit uh, for a period of eight months lasting until the end of June in order to establish the use over the winter months when resurfacing of the parking lot would not be possible um, under warranty guarantees. And so uh, the approval is conditioned on the applicant returning to CPED within that period of time to seek the permanent conditional use permit and undergo proper site plan review requirements, which they would then be required to comply with prior to expiration of the interim use. Um, those would include things like resurfacing the parking lot with uh, dustless um, hard surface material and uh, including any required landscaping and screening of the site. Uh, the applicant is here to speak today to any additional um, items, but that concludes my presentation and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? There are none. So we'll open the public hearing. Happy to hear from the applicant briefly. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this item? There is not, so I think you can be very brief. Uh, good morning, committee chair and council members. Um, D'Angelo Svenkison, uh, senior developer with Door, representing the client through the entitlement process. Um, we're excited about the opportunity. Um, as uh, Peter said, we'll be back um, first part of May to wrap up the CUP process. Um, improved landscaping stormwater retention system, stormwater pond, uh, and paving, all of which can be warranted at that time. Um, but that's the reason for the interim use instead of the CEP at the time. Thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? <coughs> We've seen a lot of you lately, so I have no, no question you'll comply with these uh, requirements. Okay, is there a motion on this item, Council President? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just I really want to um, uh, tell my colleagues that uh, I think this is a good proposal. If you notice, 
um, with the zoning map, this is a it's a strange little parcel of industrial space that we have um, uh, north of uh, uh, the railroad tracks. Um, but it's been interesting to see the interest in uh, industrial space. And next thing we have is something at the Upper Harbor. It's clear that you know it's important to have industrial uses uh, in our city because there is great demand for. Uh, those spaces, and I think this is an opportunity to see um, this particular space, uh, which was um, for a while uh, a junkyard, uh, and uh, um, you know has transformed a little bit in different uses. Uh, it was a roofing company for a while, and and now this use, uh, it it just it it tells me um, you know that that it is important to have industrial space in a community. Um, the other thing that I I just want to say is I received a letter yesterday, and I don't know if it's in the packet yet. Uh, uh, from the Neighborhood Association, which has reviewed the proposal and they're supportive of it. Um, this uh, particular uh, uh, proposal has come through the Northside uh, Job Creation Team, uh, which has worked uh, with a goal of finding jobs for people in North Minneapolis. And so this will be an opportunity uh, to increase the employment base uh, in, in the community. And so I'm, I'm excited about it. It'll take a space that uh, looks pretty rough right now and in long term will look much, much better. Uh, and again, uh, take advantages of the great transportation um, access that we have in North Minneapolis. It's right next to a freeway entrance and on and, uh, 94. And also uh, provide adjacency for the actual work that's done uh, out of the space, uh, uh, busing um, uh, students uh, um, to uh, programming in schools in the community. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased about it and I'm, I'm glad uh, we're moving forward. And I'll make the motion to approve it. Thank you. On the motion to approve the application, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. That item is complete. So we have our last and third item under the public hearing agenda, an interim use permit for 2 Dowling Avenue North. This is for a rock crushing facility. Uh, good member. <laughs> good, good morning, <laughs> council members. Uh, this is an interim use permit for Thomas and Sons to allow a concrete asphalt and rock crushing facility on the property located at 2 Dowling Avenue North. Uh, this is the northernmost property of what is the Upper Harbor Terminal site that the city is working with the park board on for redevelopment efforts um, in the future. Thomas and Sons currently has a contract with us um, to store or stockpile aggregate products on the site. They're now requesting a permit to crush those materials, which would expire November 24th of this year. Currently, as you may remember, Rams Excavating is also stockpiling aggregate products and also crushing those products on the site. Um, your committee uh, approved an interim use permit on September 9th, and then the full council acted last Friday on that permit. Their crushing permit for Ramsey expires December 31st. Um, again, uh, the permit before you today would expire November 24th of this year. Uh, CPED is recommending approval of the request subject to conditions of approval related to dust, erosion control, and noise as listed in the um, RCA before you. Thank you. And, and can you remind me, we, so we don't expect to need the use to be permitted after these dates, which are just now a month or two away? Correct. Okay. So they'll plan to complete the work of the materials that are there by those dates? Yes. I did uh, ask that question after or while writing um, the application before you, and they have only requested to do it until um, just about Thanksgiving time. Thank you. Thank are there you. any more questions for staff? Okay, there are not. So we will okay. open the public hearing. Would anyone like to speak on this item? Would anyone like to speak? Last call, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Council President. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll move approval uh, of the uh, interim use permit. And again, just uh, reiterate, there's a huge demand for industrial land in the city, and it's a real challenge to find uh, the space. Uh, this particular crushing stuff, uh, we've got all this construction going on uh, in our community and adjacency to your site uh, that you're working on is um, economic benefit, obviously, to the to the vendor, um, but also to people who are developing in the city because it cuts the cost down. So we're going to have a challenge as this moves forward. I've told my constituents that this Upper Harbor site's going to look worse before it looks better. <laughs> so I hope people are patient with it because if you go by there now, there's great big piles of, of these materials, um, but it won't be forever. Thank you. So you and you move the item. I move the item. Thank you. Then on the motion to approve the interim use permit, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. 
And that completes our agenda for today. We are adjourned.